sure to check out NFE, No Freaking Excuses, All Natural Warrior Supplements, offering pure isolate, whey protein, essential multivitamins, thermogenic fat burners, all available at NFE.com and Southern Muscle in Brandon, Florida. Powerhouse Gym in downtown Tampa, Florida is the southern mecca of bodybuilding and fitness. 30,000 square feet in one of the best equipped gyms in the country. Hardcore, inspirational, motivating and energizing. Powerhouse Gym in downtown Tampa features one-of-a-kind benefits such as the Santa Monica Stairs, the Gauntlet, the Human Performance Lab, the Rock Climbing Wall, dumbbells up to 200 pounds, the best and most effective exercise equipment. Get pumped. Get motivated. Get the best workouts of your life at the southern mecca of bodybuilding, Powerhouse Gym in downtown Tampa, Florida. Visit our website at pgtampabay.com. All right, welcome back to the Bodybuilding Legends Show, and my guest today is Rich Gaspari. All right, Rich, we are just talking about... Um, getting ready for the uh, first Olympia. So you're going to the first Olympia, which I think was held in Belgium that year, right? In 85? Brussels, Belgium, Mr. Olympia. That was a great experience as well because that's the Mr. Olympia. Actually, I got invited to the Mr. Olympia the year I won the, the Mr. Universe. Joe Weider personally invited me oh, to, okay. go, to go into the 1984 uh, Mr. Olympia. And I said, I, I said, no, I'm not ready to go into that show because I was, you know, training partners with Lee Haney. I was there to be, you know, Lee Haney's, you know, training partner to go in to push him, to go into his Olympia to win. And I just felt like, you know what, at 188, I'm not ready to go into the Mr. Olympia. Um, Did you go to that show, Rich? Did you go see it? I, of course, it was in New York. I yeah. was right in the front, front row. Oh, okay. Che cheering Lee Haney on, you know. So it was, it was a great experience, but I, I definitely, you know, I was, you know, flattered to get asked to enter it, but I thought I was that was way out of my league, you what, know. What did you think of that show with Sergio coming back and everything? Well, I remember, you know, I I was training with Lee the whole time and I lived with Lee. Yeah. So he had he had pictures of Sergio in his house, you know, cuz that's the guy he, you know, felt was going to come back and you know, when Sergio at his best, you know, his most muscular and some of the freaky shots. Yeah. You know, Lee was a little, you know, a little worried about, you know, going against the myth because it was the myth, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, it was cool to see him up there, um, you know, and seeing, you know, the myth. But it was nowhere near the myth, you know. Yeah, that we remember. Of old, you know, it was, you know, you know, of course, it was a guy that was not used to today's conditioning or that those days conditioning. Yeah. And in the way you needed to look, um, I just think he was, you know, still had a lot of size on him. But just wasn't, you know, ready to go against, you know, the new guys. Yeah. Uh, then, and that goes into '85. So I get to go into the 1985, um, you know, Mr. Olympia. Now this show, I get to go against guys like Tom Platts, mm -hmm. of course, my training partner Lee Haney, mm -hmm. um, and Muhammad Makawe. Right. Um, and who else? Many of the top, you know. Mike Christian again. Yeah, Barry DeMay was in it, I think, that year, right? And Sergio. No, hey, no, Barry DeMay didn't get it, but because he won the year after. Um, but it was Sergio Oliva. Yeah. And guess who was right next to him in the lineup was Rich Gasparri. <laughs> oh, really? Wow. Ser Sergio Oliva. So, you know, my first Mr. Olympia is funny. I never really got drawn when I died for shows. I had a full face. And so when people saw me, in, you know, in, you know, my, my workout gear, no one thought I was in shape. Right. They always saw me. I didn't have that drawn look. So everyone's like, oh. And they saw me eating when I was eating. I was always eating carbs. Yeah. You know, I was getting, you know, a couple of days before a show, really carb load. So when they saw me in a restaurant, I'm just eating and eating, you know, pasta and carbs. And right. uh, this kid's going to just get blown away when he goes into the, you know, into the Mr. Olympia, you know, these foreigners are saying. So I go into that Mr. Olympia. And again, I surprise everybody. Because I, I come third place in my first Mr. Olympia. Wow. Beating out Sergio Oliva, beating out, you know, Tom Platts, beating out one of the guys that he, he went into retirement because of me was Muhammad Makawe. Really? Wow. Yeah. Because <laughs> I beat him. He never, I don't know if you know this, you never seen him again. He never no, yeah, he got, he got second the year before. He got second. And then when I beat him and he came in uh, fourth. 
yeah, he just he, he couldn't accept that I that I beat him. Wow, that's crazy. And, uh, so I remember so, uh, I remember at that show that was covered also by ESPN and Rick Wayne was backstage and he interviewed you and he was asking you you know how it felt at 22 years old to go into the show and and beat guys like Sergio Oliva and I mean that that had to be overwhelming right I mean here you're beating guys that you read about when you were a kid. I was you know and I I, I think about it now and it's such an amazing uh, feat. Then I was like so in it I was yeah, like yeah. oh I train for this and I'm ready to beat them and I, I just like. <laughs> Right. This, you know, just this confidence in me that everyone really saw, like, wow, this kid, you know, he's cocky, but he's confident when he goes into a show, he goes yeah. to win, you know, so even Rick Wayne goes, you know, he, he's got this arrogance, but it's more confidence than arrogance, you know, yeah. when it just, I didn't think of anything going against Sergio Levin until I think of it today saying, wow, I, you know, I beat the legend, and I mm -hmm. beat Tom Platts, and I beat these guys going into my first show, um, you know, and, I, and it was cool because, it was the first time I said I was on stage comparing to my training partner, you know, and it was yeah. it was just a great feeling going in that show. And, you know, I felt I should have beat Beckles again. Yeah. But that have given me because, you know, Beckles was kind of that favorite. He ended up getting second in that show. Yeah. What did you wait for that show, Rich? I was again around I was around two twelve to two fifteen. Okay. In that show. My weight was anywhere between two twelve, two fifteen. The highest ever went was 210, 209. I was always around that weight when I competed as a pro. Okay. And you had the striated glutes uh, that year, which sort of brought in a whole new uh, whole new trend in bodybuilding. Yeah, I, I came into Conan the Barbarian, and I came in on stage, and then I come in, and I, I go to the back, and I just go, boom, and I yeah. hit this shot. <laughs> right. And all these striations hit, yeah. and the audience just goes, what the hell is that? <laughs>
So, it, you know, I, I did hit bodybuilding by storm. It was like, where did this guy come from? He's an unknown guy, comes second in the night of champions, and now this formidable opponent in the Mr. Olympia. Now, as far as uh, your guest posing, you said you turned pro the year before at the Universe, and you were promoting yourself as a pro bodybuilder and doing guest posings and seminars, which we did a lot of seminars back then. You know, all the pros did a lot of seminars. But did it really increase then after the Night of the Champions when you got second? Yeah, after the Night of the Champions, um, I started traveling a lot. You know, then, and then I was a true pro bodybuilder. And I tell pro bodybuilders today, you know, there's a big difference is if you just like, you know, put away and all you're doing is training in the gym. Now try to train in the gym every day and then got to get on a plane and travel and bring your food with you. And, you know, you had to really focus. And when I did travel, I brought all my meals with me. Uh, I was just, I was very meticulous and very structured. I never went off diet. When I brought food with me, I was the first guy to like bring containers of food with me, you know, baggies of my food. Mm -hmm. uh, even when I traveled overseas, I'd bring cans of tuna, my own rice. I never ate in a restaurant. It was very rarely that I ate. I was always eating my own food, yeah. you know. And um, back then, I was already, I was already into the gluten-free diet. Um, a lot of people didn't even know about gluten-free diet. Back in the 80s, I was already on gluten-free because it felt it really got me much leaner, you know, uh, and a lot more tighter. Yeah, I remember I read that in the magazine uh, when I was younger, and I remember you were one of the first guys to write everything down. You were really meticulous about everything, and I remember I started doing that because you were doing that, and I still do that. Or I, I, I did that to alter my career, too, because of you, you know? So, yeah. You, and, and like you said, that's true. A lot of uh, pro bodybuilders even will go to restaurants and eat right before a show, but I remember Dorian never did that, and I remember you never did that way before Dorian. Well, it's, you know, it's funny. I, I read some of Dorian's articles and he said that I learned from Rich Gasparri yeah. because Rich Gasparri kept the journal mm -hmm. and I, you know, learned to keep a journal that, like Rich Gasparri. So I did teach bodybuilders some of the secrets, you yeah. know, of what I did to get myself in the conditioning that I did is because you just don't take things, you know, haphazardly. You have to be able to sit there and figure out what works for your body, you know, and then you can see what happens to your body because not only writing it down in the journal, how do you look? How do you feel? Um, because I knew in the nationals, I didn't follow a journal and I over -dieted. So then I started learning, you know, if I saw my weight dropping and I started looking flatter, increase my carbs, increase my calories. And I would do this in a journal. If you don't have a journal, it's really hard to be able to figure out what to do. And I, and I had this type of metabolism. As I got into getting ready for a show, my metabolism would get faster and faster and faster. So that journal was important to me because I'd have to up my calories and my carbohydrates. I would do it more, you know, structured, um, writing down, okay, now I'm going to take another 50 grams of carbs and see what that does. Yeah. I'm going to another 50 grams and then finally get my weight stabilized to see what I, you know, how I would be able to hold on to a weight if I was losing too quick. Bodybuilders yeah. don't realize that you have to treat bodybuilding like I did. I treat it as a science. I always felt like you needed to, you know, have a structure. Some guys are just freaks and don't follow any type of journal. Right. But for me, it was very important to write down everything in a journal. Yeah. And another thing, too, that a lot of uh, today's guys might not realize is that we didn't have coaches back then. There were no contest prep coaches. Everybody did their own thing. I sometimes look at these guys and, and don't understand why. And I, I think it's just today's standard that they use coaches. Now, mind you, like when you got ready for a show the last couple of weeks, your mind plays tricks on you. Mm -hmm. That's when you kind of want to have somebody assess you to tell you what to do because you're really not sure whether to increase carbs, decrease carbs. Yeah. Am I flat? Am I not flat? Am I holding water? Am I not? Because you, your your head starts playing tricks on you. I had when I was there, I was training in a gym. Uh, there was a Gold's gym in Milltown. Now it's the Muscle Mill. Ronnie Cabadano was. I wouldn't say he was my coach, but I say, how do I look? Yeah. We go into the posing room. You look a little flat. I mean, he would know my body and say, well, you're holding a little water or you're getting a little flat. So then by that, I would know what to do. He wouldn't tell me what to do or how to write it. Right. Or just assess with his eyes what I look like. And I think bodybuilders today need someone to kind of assess what they look like and then tell them what to do. Yeah. Everything I did is I did it myself. Yeah. You know, I knew whether to lessen carbs, increase carbs, you know, increase proteins. I figured out my body. Yeah. And, and I just think people have just 
got it where they just want a trainer telling them what to do. Yeah, it's like these people do their first show and they don't ever do their own diet. It's like they always have somebody telling them what to do. And if it doesn't work out, then they get some other coach, you know, instead of yeah. figuring out for themselves, you know. And they really just should learn their own body. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 and you know, everybody has a different type of body and how they diet. Right. Okay, so going into 86 now, Rich, uh, they had the uh, Pro World Championships <laughs> that Arnold and Jim Lorimer used to hold in Columbus, Ohio in March. And that was a, like a precursor to the Arnold Classic before the Arnold Classic started. So you go into that show, which uh, that was also covered by ESPN. That was a great, great segment. I remember on ESPN, they did a great coverage of that. Uh, Chris Dickerson and Arnold were both uh, doing the commentating and the interviews. And I thought, I thought that was one of your best conditions ever for a show. You looked outstanding in that contest. It, it just, my, you know, you're right. I, I was never able to obtain that conditioning. I was like, like a rock. Yeah. I get that show, striations, no skin, full. Full, yeah. It, everything that you wanted to look like, I was just the perfect package going into that show. And I don't think anyone has ever seen a bodybuilder full and in that condition. Yeah. And it's a bodybuilder at the time. Because even Chris Dickerson, who wasn't a big fan of my physique, by the way, right. had to say, wow, this guy looks amazing. Yeah. You know? Wow, he looks like I've never. He goes, he brought conditioning to a whole other level. Yeah, you know, he'd say, I don't particularly like his shape, but <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that's how he used to talk, but I have to say, he's an amazing, yeah. you know, conditioning and shape, you know, that he, you know, would never be able to, you know, no one's ever been able to obtain since him. Now they have to follow his standard, which yeah. he sets that show. Now everyone has to follow this guy's standard of what he looks like. And I just came into that show, like you said, spot on. Yeah. Um, and and even your posing routine, Rich, I remember you had this awesome routine where you started out where, you know, you were bent over with your, your fist on the stage and you came up like a like a, a clock oh into the music God. or whatever. Stereotomy. Yeah. Yep. And then it ended the same way. You ended the routine the yep. same way. That was so cool. It was so well structured and so well choreographed. Yeah, and I, I got straight first in that show. Oh, yeah, I can see it. So it was a cool, yeah. and that's also as a show, Mike Christian again went against me because I beat him in the Olympia. Right. I beat him the Night of the Champions. He was so angry. He wanted to go into this pro world yeah. to beat me. And again, that show, I just blew him away. Yeah. You know, he looked at me. I remember doing shots, my back shots. He was so intimidated because that guy was known for his back. He turned around and was looking at my back to see, like, <laughs> striations from my, you know, right. from toe up to, you know. Because yeah. what happened was this, then there was the L.A. Pro, which is another show that he, you know, of course, it was in L.A. Mm -hmm. He was, to, you know, his favorite to win, or he felt he was favorite to win, and I blew him away in that show, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he looked good that year. I mean, he looked really good in that contest. He, was a, he looked amazing, but I was just so much, like, yeah. spot on. Um and it, it was just like like you said, that when it comes to conditioning was probably my best conditioning that I could ever obtain. And that's where I became almost my own critic or my own enemy because the judges expected that. Yeah. Every show. Yeah. And then Arnold interviewed you backstage and uh, you told Arnold, you said you want to follow in his footsteps and, and win the Olympia that year at 23, like he was 23. Yeah. Yeah. And I said that to him and. Like I said, I was always very confident. Yeah. <laughs> so to speak. Speaking yeah. of Arnold, when did you first meet Arnold? Because uh, when you went out to L.A., I, I imagine you had to see him in the gyms out there, right? Well, remember I, I told you earlier I met him at the mall. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I my kid, yeah. And then I moved to L.A. When I moved to L.A. Um, when I was 20 years old, I started training, of course, in Venice, Golds, but I also trained in World's Gym. And that's where I got to meet Arnold for the first time. And that's where I was 20 years old. I went up to Arnold, said, Arnold, you probably don't remember me. I was 14 years old. You know, I said I wanted to be a pro. I go, I'm a pro, and I still want to win Mr. Olympia. You know, and he says, oh, that's good. You, you stuck with it. Yeah, yeah. I said, you know, I said, I train hard, ate right, and believed in myself, like you said. <laughs> and I'm today, you know, you know, still training, you know, to, to be a top pro. So, I mean, he, he was already by then like a big famous actor. He had yeah. his own yeah. spot, you know, world gym. It was cool seeing him in the gym, um, you know, because it would be like Arnold's coming, and then he'd be yeah. training. And he'd come to the gym, and he would do his, you know, do his workout. Yeah. Did you really talk to him after that, or just sort of just see him? 
I would see him and he, he would ask me, who are you? You know, I mean, he, he was very friendly. He wasn't the yeah. type of guy that was just like to himself. He was in the gym. He'd ask who I was. Hey, I'm Rich Gasparri. Told so then he started seeing me. You go, what are you training today? You know, okay. I never got to train. I never got to train with him. I wish I could have trained with him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he never, he never asked me to train with him. I probably have been like a great honor to train with Arnold. Then, yeah. um, he had actually uh, some of the guys that he had trained with him. I mean, there was always like somebody there that was going to train with him. Roger uh, Callard or Roger Callard. Yeah. yeah, Roger Callard would always. I I remember this like yesterday. Roger Callard just did this really hard back workout, sweating. He just got done. He's like all tired. You know, he goes, I go, hey, Roger, you know, what'd you train? I did back. Arnold comes in. Hey, Roger, we're going to do back. You want to do back? Okay, <laughs> Arnold. <laughs> do back again. <laughs> Can we do back again? <laughs> so, you know, those are like good old days, you know, the yeah. Joe Gold. People don't remember that. I, I mean, I got to say, I lived in the end. Of, my bodybuilding career was at the end of the golden era. Yeah. Uh, there I got to see Joe Gold. Yeah. He, he was like he was like Mickey from you know Rocky. Yeah. If if you threw a weight wrong or if you yelled or you know if you were disrespectful, he, threw, he didn't care who you were. You could be Arnold, you could be Lou Ferrigno. He'll throw you out of the gym. <laughs> I think he's thrown Lou Lou Ferrigno out of the gym. Yeah. You know that's how, that's how he's been. And you know he got respect for me. Let me train there. He goes, I'm going to let you train here, kid. Don't friggin' break any of my equipment. You know, he goes <laughs> <laughs> respect. And it was just cool training at that world gym. No music. You had that deck outside that faced the ocean. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it's like I was living the dream, you know, yeah. living the dream of a bodybuilder. I remember reading an article once where you were doing that cable rolls and you went back and you had a knee in your back and it was Joe Gold, right? He, he put his knee back there to make sure you didn't yeah. go back too far. Well, he was like, you're doing these rows, kid, and you keep swinging back. You want to work your back? He goes, and he put his knee in my back. And he's like, <laughs> now do it. And then I started to do it and I said, okay. <laughs> so, you know, he taught me some tips too. So it was really, really cool to – have him, Zabo Kowalski, you know, was in there. Yeah. Eddie Giuliani yeah. from Pump and Iron. These are all guys that I ended up, you know, making friends with. And I was this young, up and coming bodybuilder, you know, when I was 20 years old. Yeah. And, you know, people respected Lee Haney as well. So that was Lee Haney's training partner. Yeah, that's, that's great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what an awesome time. Yeah. So then you go into the Olympia that year and it's in Columbus, Ohio. And it's, you probably had to know it was going to be between you and Lee, right? But, so then it was like now the favorite because the condition I got into that pro world, actually Lee Haney was in the audience. He actually was really intimidated and say, you know what? Rich can beat you. You know, Rich has a chance of beating you. Coming into this condition, Rich has a chance of beating you, Lee. Wow. And, you know, even though you have the greatest, you know, it was, it, the thing is, is we had two different physiques. Mm -hmm. and that's, that was the thing. But if Lee Haney was off, I always felt Lee Haney had superior genetics but the way I felt, if this Lee Haney was off and I was on, I could be Lee Haney. Yeah. That's what I always thought, you know. And that's why I would always wanted to be ready and going to the show. I said, you know what? I could train harder than Lee Haney. You know, I could get a better condition than Lee Haney. So if I can go into a show and he's slightly off, I have a chance of beating him. And there's yeah. always people that slip up. So that was my thing. If he can slip up, I can slide in there <laughs> and get that first place, you know, and beat him. Yeah. So got in that 86 Olympia and unfortunately Lee was still in shape and I came second. Now, was that really disappointing to you? Do you feel like your uh, condition was about the same there as the pro world or were you a little bit less? I, you know, I was in great condition, but yeah. I still, like you said, didn't get that condition, but I was still in great condition. Yeah, you were. I remember. Um, yeah. I just wasn't in that pro world condition. Right. That was, that was just a freaky condition. Yeah. Uh, and I, you know, I was never able to obtain that again, but <laughs> You know, I was I was close, but never that close. So I went into that show, and I did feel good because I went from third, I came to second. I go, well, I'm not going to be like Lee Haney. Lee Haney came third and then won. Mm -hmm. I guess went from third, I'll do second. Next year, I'll win. <laughs> so I kept <laughs> saying in my head. Right, right. So now you go into 87, and you didn't do any shows prior to the Olympia. You trained all year for that. And I remember when you did that show in 87, which that was in Sweden, right? The Olympia in Sweden? It was in uh, Gutenberg, Sweden. Yeah. And you you were really big. You were much much bigger than you were the year before. I came in from a from a two eleven to two twenty one. Wow! Ten so I, I I was you know two twenty two two twenty one. I was up to as much as two twenty five. Wow! So when I went into that show, I go I can't beat Lee because he's bigger than me. So I got to get bigger. So a full year, all I did was train for mass and size, 
and you know to keep my conditioning hopefully keep my streamlineness but it's a little hard you mm -hmm. know when you start to put on like 11 pounds of muscle on your frame yeah so I went to that show not as ripped great great conditioning yeah much bigger my shoulders were really big that year yeah you know I was impressive. I like the way you looked at that show, Rich. I thought, I mean, I still look at pictures of you from that 87 Olympia. I'm like, wow, you were incredible. You were so thick, and so massive. Yeah. And I, you know, I felt that, but the judges told me, you're not that streamlined bodybuilder. Don't try to be Lee Haney in his own game. Beat right. him in your game. Right. When I go in a competition, if I don't go 100%, 110%, you know, I can't win. I have to go psychologically, physically, all the way. It's like, if I don't win, I'll die. I, I ended up saying, okay, I shouldn't be bigger. Although I think today I should have just kept staying that size, just honing in on just getting harder and harder. But what I ended up doing is dieting down again, following year going into the, you know, the, the, the 1988 Olympia and coming in at 209. Yeah. You know, that show. Go back to uh, 87, though, you went up against Lee Labrada for the first time, and that was his first Olympia because he had won the Night of the Champions, I think, the year before in 86, but then yep. he skipped the Olympia in 86, so he did his first Olympia in 87. So how did you feel going up against him? Did you still feel it was going to be between you and Lee for that show in 87? I didn't even think about Lee Labrada. It was yeah. always like my mindset was always it's me against Lee, Lee Labrada, yeah. uh, Lee Haney, not yeah. Lee Labrada. Yeah. Never right. thought of any other competitor but Lee Haney. Um, a little that I know, you know, a year later. But, I, you know, I forgot that in 87, I ended up competing in 
Grand Prix, one Grand Prix that Lee Haney went into actually won that Grand Prix. Right. Uh, where I forgot where that was. I think Germany, it was in Germany, 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 which he won. And then the other Grand Prix, I swept them all. Lee Haney didn't compete him, and I and I won the rest of those shows. So you beat uh, Labrada then at those Grand Prix shows. I beat. I beat. Yes, I beat. I guess it was Labrada. Christian, um, probably. Christian. So I won straight first in the other three shows. Okay. Haney won one, and I won the other the other three. I think it was four shows. Okay. Four pro shows. So that was my first Grand Prix tour. Yeah. You know, competing, you know so then, then it was like me getting ready for the 1988. I thought I got to win the 1988 Olympia. Now, 88 was interesting because they went back to uh, California and they held the Olympia. I think it might have been the first time, right, in California? It's the first time at in, in California. And I did something different. I decided to get ready for the Mr. Olympia in California. Oh, okay. So, I asked Joe Weeder, I said, Joe, can I can I do the whole summer? Um, which was really cool. You know, back then, I mean there wasn't so called contracts, but you know, I did photos for him and you know, I was under contract doing photos with him. And he says, Okay, I'll pay for your hotel expenses as long as you do photographs for the magazine. Hmm. And you know, go in, you know, in June. So I went in there around June. The show was in September. Yeah. I lived at the Marina Pacifica. Right in Venice Beach. Yeah, I remember that hotel. That was a cool hotel. Yeah, so I, you know, rented a car, Marina Pacifica, and just uh, trained at Golds and Worlds, you know. But Lee Haney ended up training in Georgia, you know, but I stayed in L.A. Mm -hmm. It was good because it was, I got a lot of publicity. That year, full of magazines, you know, Joe used me for a lot of photographs. He actually used me for his uh, training courses. You know, I mean, they had the old training courses, the Joe Weider. Yeah, training systems. I ended up becoming the model for that thing. And okay, yeah. I got more covers. I got Iron Man covers. Back then, I had to sneak in and say that they took the pictures before because then I was on the <laughs> I did some pictures because I love Mike Nevue, yeah. John Blick. Uh So I did a lot of photos with you know Mike Nevue as well and, and yeah. did good stuff in Iron Man. Now, the Olympia that year, that was pretty unusual because it seemed like nobody really worried about coming in big. Everybody just came in really, really ripped. It came in great condition. Yeah. Went into that show, again, to be, you know, ripped. Um, I knew I could get into conditioning. I felt that I was in L.A., didn't have to travel, stayed at, the, you know, like I said, the Marine Pacifica. Um, again, all the other bodybuilders, I, as you said, came in ripped. Barry DeMay came in third. Yeah. Really, really ripped. Actually, uh, Gary Stratum, who, you know, could have been a formidable, you know, competitor, mm -hmm. ended up over dieting for that show and coming in way, you know, too small for him. Yeah. He's a guy that if he would have put on the size that he later on looked like in the WBF, he would have been scary. Yeah. You know, to compete against. And you only weighed like two oh nine for that one, right? But that's the one they really did the weigh in, right? Oh uh, from two twenty two to two oh nine is yeah. a big well it was it was before I started carving too, so I ended up getting about, you know, what my normal weight was about 210, 211. Mm -hmm. uh, but I lost about 10 pounds yeah. to get ready for that show, which, you know, I think, think about then and now, you know, should I have been that guy in 87 in that show? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? And that was really tight because uh, you had, uh, like you said, you had Barry DeMay came in fantastic condition. Lee Labrada again was in great condition, but he dropped down to fourth. And then you had uh, Stridham and Mike Quinn in the top six. Yeah, it was a it was a very it was a really good show. Um, like I said, I was psyched up to win, and when I didn't win, then I was like, "Well, let me clean up going into the Grand Prix yeah. in Europe, which there were seven. Yeah, and then it was you and Labrada going back and forth, right? He won three. Well, like and he I won said, four. I was going to go and win them all, and then all of a sudden. I got beaten for the first time <laughs> by, by another Lee. <laughs> and, you know, you know, I, I won the first Grand Prix. Then the second Grand Prix, I felt it was almost set up. They wanted this rivalry besides me and Lee Haney. Yeah. And, and, and they had, you know, I'm not going to say he didn't deserve to win, but he, you know, he ended up different, different body altogether. Mm -hmm. Great closing routine. One thing about Lee was always ready and conditioned, just like me mm -hmm. going into the show. And him and I, in that year, that that Grand Prix was the most like 
competitive Grand Prix because I won, then he would win. Farland showed he thought he was going to sweep them all, then I would beat him. <laughs> then all of a sudden, I would win again. So it was, he won three and I won four. What made me feel good is the last Grand Prix, which was in Italy, which, you know, where I originated, I won that show and that was the fourth win against, you know, Lee Labrada that he came in second. Mm-hmm. You know, who else got in really good shape was um, Bob Paris. Yeah. Got amazing shape. Um, but it was, that was a grueling Grand Prix because it was seven shows in a month. Wow. And um, it just, uh, to me, burnt me out. Yeah. You know. How was the camaraderie between you guys? Because I saw pictures on, um, I don't know if I saw them on Facebook or whatever, but I think it was like you and Barry DeMay and Lee Labrada and maybe Mike Quinn. You guys were all like hanging out in a hot tub or something. I mean, it seemed like you guys had good camaraderie going on. It, it, was, actually sw- it was actually a swimming pool because we just got done competing. Okay. It was, a, it was a, a, a show in a gymnasium. And then, we, you know, we're backstage. It was a pool right right there and we we're done with the show because we had all our tanning stuff on i go i just want to jump in that pool when i'm done with this thing <laughs> so we all we all ended up like at the end of the show jumped in the pool um you know yeah we i mean it was a camaraderie you had to we had to be with each other you know for a whole month you know hanging out and yeah. you know i ended up becoming good friends with barry you know although i was competitive with lee you know we, we were you know we were close you had to borrow some tanning you know uh you know uh, Diaderm, a protein. Mm-hmm. I gave it to him, um, but it was like I said, it was very competitive, and I stuck to my guns, making sure I was spot on the whole time because I knew this guy would be in shape the whole time going into these Grand Prix. Yeah. So then we go into '89, and they do the very first uh, Arnold Classic, and you decide to go into that. And um, I heard that you were sick or something right before the show. I remember watching the broadcast of that. Well, I got to I got to say cuz I did those seven grand prix shows, the Mr. Olympia really really pushed my body to the limit yeah. in 80. Um should I've went to the Arnold? I I think now yes, I won the show, so I can't say it was a mistake entering that show, but my body was burnt out. Mm-hmm. I started getting ready for the show, already having problems. Um going into the show, I ended up tearing my left pec. Oh, really? You know, to that show. So I had a slight pec tear because um, my body was burnt out. Right. Going into that show, my immune system was down. I ended up catching a flu. So I took a week off from training, couldn't train because I was totally sick. Um, I went into that show in great shape, um, but actually less. It was probably the, the least amount that I weighed winning that show. It was like, like 207 mm-hmm. uh, going into that show. Here that Rich seemed more determined to win than any of the other competitors, and his confidence level was high when we talked to him at his home, and as you can see here now, it's pretty high still. It is very confident. He's a, he's, he's a very confident fellow today, and I think the reason for it is, is because he came so many times second and third because he was always a little bit off. He was sometimes too heavy, other times he came in a little bit too slim and uh, not big enough, but it seems that he knows that he's perfect today. He has the perfect balance. And he's right on the money today. Interestingly enough, Rich was sick for two and a half weeks before the competition. He lost nine pounds, but he said that the illness actually helped him because as he put the weight back on, his skin stretched. That's a new one on me. <laughs> well, actually, I asked him before the day's performance that if he wins, will he go to the hospital before every competition <laughs> and just ask people to sneeze on him? <laughs> and he laughed and he said, no, 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 because, you know, the illness could have caused him to stop, you know, training and to, to compete today. See the confidence? How he hits the poses, perfect timing with the posing, the way he moves around. He shows a good balance of power and also grace, which is very important. You see the way he makes a graceful move, and then again a very powerful move. He has had a lot of success in bodybuilding. He was Mr. Universe in 1984, the Pro World Championships in 1986, he won the 1988 European Grand Prix Championship, and he's finished second the last three years in Mr. Olympia. But as you say, Arnold, I think that he wants this one as bad as any of the other ones. 
Oh, he really wants it, you can tell. And the, the, and the, the people love him, look at that. Uh, won the show, it was in great condition. You know, came second to one of my bodybuilding idols, Robbie Robinson. Yeah. Who, who was close, he was very close and almost beating me. Yeah. And that's because, like I said, I had the flu, I had an injury. You know, a lot of things went wrong going into that show, and I still ended up winning, you know, the first Arnold Classic. Yeah, and that was great coverage, too. They covered that on NBC, and uh, you got a lot of good coverage in prime time, right? Well, Arnold personally, see, I didn't want to compete in the show. Arnold personally called me, and he asked me, you know, will you go into the first Arnold Classic? And at first they said no. He goes, well, no, I'm, I'm personally, you know, inviting you to this. Please go. We're gonna we're gonna bring you on the Tonight Show, which I thought was really cool. Oh yeah, let's and, talk about that too. I forgot about that. <laughs> well, it was, it was me and Mike Christian that yeah. invited to the Tonight Show. Um, so you know, he goes, there's gonna be a lot of coverage, and you know, you're gonna be, you win this show, you will be go down as history as the number, you know, the first Arnold Classic winner. And he can never take that away from you, just like Larry Scott. Yeah. You're gonna be the first Arnold Classic winner. You know, and I thought about it, I said, you know what? Although I was burnt out totally, all I wanted to do was let my body rest. Went back into, you know, grueling training and getting ready for that show. Um, and but got was, to go. That was tonight. cool. You guys got on uh, the Tonight Show with Jay Leno, and you both came out, and you and Mike, uh, Mike Christian, you guys did a posing routine for the audience. That was that was pretty unprecedented before that and after that. Oh, yeah. We, we went on stage, and, you know, you know, Lee said, you know, I mean, uh, Arnold just said, basically, he says, you know, make it light, you know, don't try to be like so serious. And, you know, yeah, you know, it was funny because I thought Mike was going in the show. He ended up not even going into the I know. Uh, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. He ended up dropping out. But so we both, you know, I think it was about four or five weeks out. Uh, we went on, I had to fly directly from New Jersey to L.A. in one day and then fly back home because I said I'm in, you know, contest mode. Yeah. I don't be like traveling. So he flew me back and forth. Um, got to go on the show, you know, they asked me serious questions, you know, they were asking me, so what do you do? How do you look like that? What do you eat? And back then, Jay Leno was endorsing Doritos. Right. So I go like, you know, what do you eat? I said, Doritos. <laughs> so it was a joke. That was great. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, so. I remember seeing I, that. It, it was, it was, you know, it was great to get on a Tonight Show and, yeah. you know, and the coverage that was on that show on TV, Arnold, you know, on NBC, you know, NBC Sports, it was right. really, really cool. Right. So then, uh, we go into the 89 Olympia, which is in uh, Italy. So, yeah. And, and didn't you go to Italy for a while and train out there, Rich? <laughs> well, after the 88 uh, Olympia and the Grand Prix, I made friends with um, an Italian trainer. He asked me, anytime you want, come to Italy. You know, you're, you're one of the favorites in Italy. He can get you a lot of work in seminars and exhibitions, you know, throughout Italy. So I took, you know, I took him on and basically – you know, after the, that was another thing, after the Olympia Grand Prix, I ended up going out to Italy, you know, doing a couple, you know, seminars, you know, after I won the Italian Grand Prix, went in to go into the, you know, the Arnold Classic, won that, and then went back to Italy in the spring and stayed in Italy for about a month and a half, hmm. again, traveling throughout Italy doing seminars, exhibitions. I ended up really loving it. It was the first time I got to go to Italy. And wow. for me, it was where my family's from because I'm first-generation American. So oh, I got wow. to go to Italy and um, just travel throughout Italy and get to know the Italian people. And, you know, I was like, because of the Italian name, I was, a, I was a favorite in Italy. And I saw every city <clears throat> through this guy. I saw every city because he set up a seminar or exhibition in every part of Italy. So I got to see parts of Italy that Italians don't even get to see from Sardinia wow, no kidding. all the way up to the north, to the south. I went everywhere. So, yeah, so the last, uh, again, I said, well, it worked in 88. I lived in L.A. No, this show's in Italy. Let me live in Italy. You know, so I ended up living in Italy hmm. up in the mountains. Um, the problem is, is it was in America, not the same food. Yeah. Um, and, and the equipment wasn't the same. I actually flew out equipment out there because i didn't like their leg press i didn't like their hack squat right so i flew, i flew machines out there to italy that i felt that i needed you know to train with because then they had selectorized leg press machines they didn't have a 45 degree angle leg press yeah hack squat 
So they got these machines for me. I ended up getting a Nautilus leg extension, just stuff that I was used to using and sending wow. it to the gym. Getting ready for that show. I started getting, you know, this trainer was going to say, hey, do this or hey, do that. So I started changing what I normally do. Hmm. And it's my big mistake because I go into the 1989 Olympia for the first time. Rich Gasparri now is holding water hmm. in pre -judging. Um I stayed in Italy for the past six weeks, training in Italy, becoming an Italian again. And I feel like this is my other country. Besides being an American, I feel that I'm an Italian. And I really want to win in Italy. I feel I'm still just as symmetrical, even though I'm 219 comparison to 206. So I've gained a lot of muscle on my frame, but I've gained it all in the right spots. And I feel that to beat someone like a Lee Haney, I have to be a big, smaller version. So that's what I feel that I've done. I'm, I'm a lot bigger than I was. Uh, I feel I'm a lot more symmetrical, and I kept the Gaspari striations of what I'm known for. And then end up losing to upcoming bodybuilder Vince Taylor. Right. And, and coming in fourth in that show. Yeah, that had to be tough. Huh? Vince was doing his like very first Olympia, and, and you were like the favorite. You were second three years in a row. 
Yeah. So he was like, again, like me, you know, I was always the, you know, I was this upcoming new guy. Now Vince is the new guy. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's, so the tide changed. <laughs> yeah. But now he became one of the favorites. How did it feel all those years placing uh, second, Rich? Because, I mean, that, that's a fantastic accomplishment, and Lee Haney was an incredible bodybuilder to take second to. But it had to be tough, like sort of the pressure on you, right? Like you're beating all these guys, and all, like you said, all the new guys coming up, and every year you're holding them all back, and you're beating everybody. You're really the best bodybuilder in the world except for Lee Haney. A lot of pressure. What you said mentally, Yeah, it's a lot of pressure on me. And, you know, the first time I lost – to Lee Labrada, although it was very upsetting, it kind of let the pressure off on me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, let myself know that, you know, I can go into a show and I, you know, I can lose. You know, it's anybody on that given day, especially in Grand Prix, because there's one after another, you're not going to be in condition every show. Yeah. Uh, I had to let it go. So, you know, I did want to go into the 89 Olympia and I didn't want to come back and I wanted to win after winning. The Arnold Classic, I was one of the favorites to win, you know, the Olympia. But, you know, I came in that show very disappointed. You know, fourth place to me was like coming in last. Yeah. You know, in that first Mr. Olympia. And it was starting, it, you know, to be honest with you, it was, it, I started seeing the signs of burnout. Mm -hmm. You know, because I was like just this bodybuilder who never let go eating, sleeping, training, eating, sleeping, training from – the 20 year old bodybuilder who win who won the Mr. Universe all the way up to 1989. I never rested. Yeah. I let my body go. And it was always balls to the wall. If I don't win, I'm going to die. Right. That kind of the mental, physical stress that I had was just way too much. And I knew that I needed to take a break. Yeah. Yeah. So then, um, they go into 1990 and, um, that Olympia was in Chicago, and that was sort of different because that was the only Olympia that was drug tested. Yes, so I went into that show totally natural. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, unlike some other guys that were able to um, beat the test or know how to take certain uh, products because it was a it was a it was a urine test, mm -hmm. not not a lie detector test. Um, so I went into the show you know, natural. And of course, you know, didn't look like I normally would look, you know, going to the show. I still think I look pretty good. Would, you weigh, would you weigh that year, Rich? You know, I didn't even weigh myself. I think I was in the low, I, I still was in the low 200s, but mm -hmm. not in the same density. I couldn't get that same density that I could get, mm -hmm. you know, like taking stuff, um, probably around 205, 206 going okay. into that show. Um, a lot of the bodybuilders, again, were, you know, they were way off. Lee yeah. Haney was way off. Yeah. Uh, Labrada was off. The only bodybuilder that came into that show spot on was Mike Christian. Right. Who I felt should have won that show. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. So. What, I mean, was, that, what was everybody's uh, mind? What was everybody's feeling going into that, knowing that it was drug tested? Because I know that was something new that they tried that year. They did it with the Arnold and they did it with the Olympia. I think a lot of us were just like it was the first time to try to do this and, and get you to be able to come into shows. I think if we continued on, we'd be able to be better. But it was the first time going from one way of getting ready to another way of getting ready. So it was like everybody was off on what yeah. to do and how to train. And nobody came in like the hardness or the, the fullness. And, you know, we all still look like we did, but not like we should, you know. Right. You know, on stage. So it was it was tough. And. I ended up coming in uh, fifth in that show, again, placing down another notch, again, feeling very, very burnt out. Mm -hmm. that <laughs> meant, I was more mentally burnt out in bodybuilding than anything. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, the, the next year that we talk about is uh, 91, and that was Lee Haney's last year, and that was the first time we all got to see Dorian Yates. What did you think of Dorian when you first uh, saw him? I thought he was a freak. Um I was next to him in the Olympia lineup. Yeah. yeah. I said, I, I tried to come in that show. I was bigger. Um, again, I stayed in LA for that show. I trained in LA for that show, but um, I, I just felt very burnt out, but I went into that show wanting to, I felt that if I took a year off, if I totally got out of the bodybuilding scene, 
that what it would have done is get everybody else to just move up the ranks and then I would disappear, which I thinking about it, you know, now I should have took a year off back in 89 mm -hmm. and then came back and then had my body to get back in the condition I looked at in the 86, 87. Um, but I ended up not taking off and then my body just started having signs of like burnout. Um, although I look, I look good in 91, I ended up then after 91, uh, you know, going into the Arnold Classic, not placing the top five in ninety in, in I guess ninety two, mm -hmm. and, and then saying, "Listen, I need I need a break," and then took off uh, two and a half years. I got oh, really? out. Okay, yeah. Well, that was an amazing career you had, though, Rich. And uh, like I said, to I think a lot of people don't realize that at such a young age you were such an incredible bodybuilder. You know, to win the junior nationals at twenty years old, to win the universe at 21 years old and to turn pro and, and then uh, to play second to Lee Haney three years in a row. And uh, like I said, that pro world you were in, that was an amazing shape. And that was, you were only 22 then, right? Yeah. 22 years old and, that, yeah. and the conditioning. And it's funny because, you know, people like look at upcoming bodybuilders and they say conditioning that I obtained is not obtained by someone in their early twenties. It's someone that's like in their mid thirties. Yeah. Uh, um, and I was able to get into that conditioning at a very young age where most top bodybuilders, you know, even someone like a Phil Heath, um, you know, in his early, when he was younger, really didn't have that condition until he got into his thirties. Yeah. But something, you know, genetically I had when it came to conditioning. Yeah. And not to mention the fact that you won the, the very first Arnold Classic and then uh, you were just awarded the Lifetime Achievement Award uh, a year ago, right? Yeah, I, I got to... You know, it's funny. It was 25 years later that I got this Lifetime Achievement Award by Arnold, uh, by Arnold Schwarzenegger. And it was a surreal. It was just surreal because, you know, after bodybuilding, become successful with my supplement company, um, you know, thinking about what I've done in my career and, you know, between bodybuilding and uh, what I've done with, you know, being in the industry still mm -hmm. uh, prevalent part of the industry. It was 30 years of my life, you know, that I put into doing this from 20 on to being 50 and getting this award. Um, I was one of the youngest recipients of the Arnold classic when I got that, you know, I got that award and it was, it was a great feeling. It was, it was, it was as good or almost as good as winning the first Arnold. Yeah. And getting the award because the award was given to bodybuilders like Sylvester Stallone and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, bodybuilders like Lou Frigno and Jack LaLanne and Reg Park. Yeah. Yeah. Reg Park and these bodybuilders. So, it's really, really, you know, an honor to be able to get that award or, or be, you know, a bronze plaque at Venice Beach is a cool, you know, award to get. Yeah. So yeah. A, lot, a lot of these accolades afterwards are, are really cool. Yeah. Well, I think it's great, Rich, that you, uh, you had this passion for something you really wanted to do as a young kid. And like I said, it really started with the comic books when you were, uh, you know, nine years old, 10 years old, and you followed it all the way through and you did a lot what a lot of other people could never do which was you realized your dream, you followed through on your passion and you made it all happen. So it's got to be a, a great, great feeling looking back at it all. It really is. I, I you know, I've made some mistakes, but everyone has, and you know, sure. I don't have any regrets and, and I just feel right now, you know, I am living, you know, I'm living the dream that, you know, I can enjoy still being in the bodybuilding, you know, world, not having to be a competitor, but being more the icon or the mentor to others. Uh, the legend they call me. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, it, it is cool to have that and still be known. You know, we talked earlier, you know, it's funny that young kids now become fans of mine, you know, cause I do videos and I do pictures of me training today. And I, you know, I, I train five days a week and try to stay in good shape. Um, but then people start to look me up and see what I did and what I did as a bodybuilder. Like, wow, this guy was a great bodybuilder. Yeah. So I I'm getting this young generation of people that are re becoming fans of Rich Gasparri, you know, the 19, 20, 21 year olds right. that are not looking at me and saying, wow, he was a great bodybuilder at a very young age. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Rich, we should also mention that you're going to be at the uh, LA Fit Expo coming up uh, in LA at the, is it the end of this month in January? It's actually the first weekend, um, no, February 6th. February 6th, so, okay. Yeah, I, I go to LA, I'm actually doing a tour, visiting stores. Uh, the 31st, so I get to LA the 1st, so it's actually the 7th, um, okay. so yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be in Los Angeles, 
um, at, near the Staples Arena. Mm-hmm. So if it's in LA, come stop by the booth. Uh, we'll be at the Arnold Classic as well. Uh, I think it's the 26th or 27th uh, anniversary of the show. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of years come by since the first one that I won, and it's just yeah. an amazing show yeah. to see. Yeah, and you got some new products, right, with uh, Gaspar Nutrition? New products. Um, you know, we're bringing back a product, uh, Plasma Jet, which was my NO product. Mm-hmm. Really, really high end. You want to get a pump, you got to use this product, only four, four pills a day. New test booster that we're coming out with. We had Nova Dex, now have Nova X coming out. Um, other new products are coming into 2015 we're going to introduce, but, you know, <clears throat> we're just rebranding coming up with uh, a whole new look of the brand, you know, just, just up, you know, I've had this brand for 18 years. So it's just giving it a, a new look to today's standards, to the, you know, the younger generation, you know, Joe Weider says every gen, every year is a new generation of bodybuilders. Yeah. So you got to keep up with the times. And, you know, when I came up with the company and, and, and now is 18 years have passed. So it's the guys who used my product 18 years ago, are not even training or doing anything now. <laughs> right. It's today, so you want to continue uh, in innovation and, and you know reinventing yourself, so to speak. Right, that's what we're doing. All right, Rich. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on the show on the natu- on the uh, Legends of Bodybuilding show, and it's been great talking about your career. And we really appreciate your time. We know you're a busy guy, so we're glad you got to sit down with us and talk for a while. Thanks, John. I really enjoyed it. All right. Thanks again for joining us for the Bodybuilding Legends show. I want to thank Rich Gaspari for joining us. Yes, it was an excellent interview. We will see you in two more weeks for another edition of the Bodybuilding Legends show. Take care, everybody.